Welcome to another Consults Over Coffee. I'm Dr. Michael Jones. My guest today is Dr. Heidi Huck, a recently retired gastroenterologist now well into a second successful career, I might add, as an artist living in northern Michigan. She's here to talk with us today about humanity, art, and the practice of medicine. We're live. Hey, it's Dr. Michael Jones. I am here with another segment of Consults Over Coffee. And joining me today is my old colleague, Dr. Heidi Huck. And we have had parallel and occasionally intersecting paths in our lives, which includes the current time where we are both recently retired and pursuing things outside of medicine. And you are now up in northern Michigan. Yes, yes. Um, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Um, I'm in northern Michigan. I, we, our paths crossed in Chicago, well, in Virginia, Richmond, in medical school, then in Chicago, uh, right. postgraduate training. Um, and, um, and then I left Chicago. It's been 12 years now. Moved up to northern Michigan. I'm in the very rural area, uh, but still on the same lake, just a little higher up the coast. Well, it's it's gorgeous up there. It is beautiful. It I didn't realize your family had been up there that long. Yes. Um, the family has been in Chicago since before the fire and for generations, uh, you know, at least my great, great grandparents would come up. And now my mom lives up here and my sisters have homes. My brother's in Wisconsin. He's the outlier. <laughs> Cheeseheads. <laughs> <laughs> the uh yeah um and i can see obviously it is gorgeous up there because you've got some of your paintings behind you which is what you're doing now right yes yes yeah so you're now a, a full-time artist yes it really and i'm so grateful because it um it, it's given me um a focus post-retirement and you know in the midst of this pandemic when, um, you know, I, I might have thought about traveling. Well, that's out the window for right now or, or doing community uh, work. That's certainly minimized. But um, this has been a goal of mine for a long time and an interest since, you know, I was a kid to, um, to draw and paint. So I'm exploring that. I'm doing some lessons. You can do some stuff online. It's really amazing. No, I've kind of I've kind of done the same thing, which is is sort of going back to school in yes. a way. I mean, online classes, working on just all the mechanics of of crafting music, you know, work and and um, yeah. So it's kind of nice in in a way. I the question I had about all this is, and and I'm curious as to what your thoughts are. When you were you painting while you were still practicing? Um, yes, a little bit. In fact, there was a point in time um, where I went to the University of Illinois. They have a master's program in biomedical visualization, which is a fancy way of saying medical illustration, medical and scientific. Yeah. So I thought, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to continue in medicine at that point. I thought, well, you know, well, where can I marry the two interests of art and science? Um, it's a two-year program. I didn't, I, at the, the end, I didn't quite completed, um, I, you know, took two years, but then didn't do like the, the last thesis, moved up here instead. But um, uh, it was, that was great. A lot of digital art though, which is not my main interest. And, and also with illustration, you're, you're doing art, dictating, you know, you're telling, it's more narrative. You're telling a story and you're telling somebody else's story. So right. I, uh, you know, now I've gravitated more into the fine art, uh, which is more personally expressive and, uh, and much more satisfying. Do you, do you think that when you retired, when you finally stepped away from medicine, did it, what, what was the impact on your, on your, on your art, on your painting? Oh, I, you know, I've just, I was, I've been waiting to do it more full time. I, I just, um, so it's, it's really given me the, uh, the the I need I need the time the time frame the hours together to to really focus on it. 
time. And that's what, that's what it gave me to retire to just to do that. Did you, do you think that, um, that your creativity improved by not practicing medicine full time? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yes, in, in that it, it frees up more brain space, I mean, to, uh, to just to mull over different questions instead of having to, to worry about, you know, what test to order or to make sure that someone's compliant with their medications. I get to think about, well, how can I represent this object to really show its form. How how is light uh, interacting with this that I can see that it's a three D object, or uh, how can I portray motion in this wave? Um, so it's yeah. I I just I I didn't have the luxury of taking the time to think those thoughts. Right. I, I mean, I noticed the same thing, which which was I. It it took a while, but I think I sort of decompressed a little bit. Uh -huh. and things move at a different pace. You have, you're, you're not encumbered with everything that happened during the day, everything that might happen while you're on call or that could happen at night or over the week that waiting for the other shoe to drop kind of thing. And, and, and that that's hard. And, and, and you, that ought to be priority too. I mean, you know, you've got a person, you're responsible for somebody else. That, that takes priority. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I, I mean, it was interesting because because we have a number of, of folks that we've gone to school with or, or that we have in common who were, who, were, who were medical practitioners who are fairly involved and adept in the arts. I mean, I was, I was thinking, you know, um, Lowry and, and Steve come to mind and as both incredible photographers. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and Steve, I know, paints as well. Yeah. And Steve's son has stuff over at VMFA now. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and it's interesting. I mean, I think if you, if you went out there a fair number, I think there's a lot of people in the medical community who have an interest in that way. And I, yeah. I was always drawn to the idea of, of you know, it, I've always regarded the practice of medicine as being a humanity rather than a science. Uh, uh -huh. You know, I mean, there's a lot of science in there, but as you know, right. we also reject a lot of good science because it doesn't fit the current thinking about yeah. something. And so, but so I think that, that it, it's a profession that attracts people that like to think synthetically, maybe, is that the right, maybe that's, a, uh, you know, I, I think that's true. I, um, I find medicine and the practice of medicine, I mean, there is an art because you have to be so, you have to be very sensitive, uh, very perceptive. You have to be taking in, inputting a lot of data and a lot of it, it's visual. Um, some of it's auditory, some of it's olfactory, um, you know, <laughs> something. But uh, you, uh, so you're, you're, always trying to discern something from that information. And I think the arts are, are that way as well. Music, uh, um, you know, visual arts, cinematography, even, uh, even culinary arts, you, 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 you know, there's, you, you take a lot of that, that's, that sensing and, and use it, use it to, for your production. Well, and I always thought, that even when you're when you're talking with a patient, and it's say it's someone you're you're meeting for the first time, that that whole engagement is in many ways sort of performance art. But at least I always thought of that way because I'm trying to figure out what's the most effective way to communicate with this person. Uh huh. Yes. To to get the story that I need to get, and and to engage with them and bond with them so that right. they buy they realize, look, this guy's on my side. This guy, he's <laughs> hearing me. He's in this with me. Uh -huh. And different people need express things in different ways and will respond to being spoken to favorably in some ways and unfavorably in others. So 
I'm always kind of in my mind kind of calculating, okay, what, what can I say? How can I say it? What topics, where, what topics can I, can I go to? What should I stay away from right now? I mean, there's this whole active process of, you know, how to, how to get the information on how to bond with people. So it's, it's more than just here, fill out the form. Cause people would come in and say to me all the time, well, did you read my notes? And I'm like, yeah, I did, but didn't you come in here to have a conversation? (laughs) (laughs) Otherwise, we could have done this by via the via the US Postal Service. I mean, it just and and I I think that's that's a big part of what drew me into the practice of medicine was more that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I agree, and it makes me think what you brought bringing that up uh, when you have to give some bad news. You know, you're coming out of the unit, the endoscopy unit, and and you have to, you have to, you really, I mean, all your sensors are out there. This is, this could go well, this could go badly, but you've got to get the message across. You want to do it concisely and hopefully in a way that's going to, that they'll be able to respond to it, take it in and, you know, um, process. It, it's tough because it's also one of those things you you really have one chance to get it right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. really you've got to be on your toes. Yeah. And 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 I I think that 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 was that to me I thought was kind of the best part of that that aspect of it was was really the most interesting part of the job. I mean I liked doing procedures. I liked doing endoscopy. The 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 science of medicine. Yeah. Is, is really cool. But, you know, one of, one, of, one of my old professors used to say to me, he goes, you know, I can, I can teach you pretty much what you need to know about managing any given digestive disease in about five minutes or less. But how to deal with people uh-huh. is really, life. <laughs> that's a lifetime. That's a lifetime. And, and back when we were doing physical diagnosis, right, as second year medical students, um, there was a guy, John Farrar at the VA, who was, I think, chief of staff at the VA, who was one of like, very proud I didn't, and I didn't realize this at the time, but he was like, like a made man in gastroenterology. He was like, yeah, I didn't know this as a second year medical student. He's the guy that taught me physical diagnosis. Wow. I didn't know who the heck he was at the time. I, later, you know, I, I met him like, oh, I remember, you know, and, and, and but he, he always said to me, he goes, you know, he goes, you, you always have to touch people. He goes, you don't always have to examine everyone. He goes, but it's really important to touch someone. He goes, and he was kind of, he, he said, he goes, because when they come in here, he goes, they're worried. He goes, the fox is in the hen house. Which I thought was a great phrase. He goes, he goes, you have to help reassure people and calm them down. And, and he goes, and just touching them in some way. You know, in this day and age, we all get paranoid about touching people. But yeah. you know, I, I I think that that human touch is such an important part of the healing process. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I you know, I agree, and I think it's really been brought into a rather sharp relief now when you can't see anybody <laughs> you yeah know, stay apart but it, it it does and you realize i and and i i had i i did one of these segments um with a, a nurse practitioner that i worked with who's down in a smaller hospital down in tappahannock oh. and she's an oncology nurse practitioner really outstanding human being and clinician and that's what she said she's she was very adamant that it's, it's, it's just not the same. Talking to people on the phone, if you know them, it's okay for a lot of things because you can kind of figure out whether you need to get them in or not. But for someone you don't know, the difference between you know telemedicine and sitting three feet apart in the office or sitting in the same room where it's just the two of you and having where you can... You, 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 you do, you see them, you sense them, you smell them, all of that factors yeah. into, into, 
how we how we figure out what's going on and how we help people. And and the interesting thing to me, and and I'm curious as your take on this is. I found it as the years went by that the time that we were allowed and our ability to spend that time with people and to forge those relationships seemed to get the pressures of the healthcare system seem to make that harder to do as the years have gone by. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, and that's, that, that was sort of one of the things that really kind of pushed me towards retiring sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. I mean, just because it, 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 in many ways, it struck me as being, it is, it's fundamentally a humanity. You're dealing with people in a very intimate way, but really, you know, it's just what level of visit are we billing for today? I mean, it, it all, everything turned into a commodity. It yeah. was, you know, yeah. quantitized and, and. Yeah, and I think we escaped that to a large degree. I mean, when you think about people in internal medicine, you know, five minute, 10 minute visit. Uh, thankfully, I never got pressured into that. I always could have the 45 minute. Yeah as a, you know, in, in, in gastroenterology, that, because you need that, you need that history. Uh, it's, it's really where all the information is gonna come. And, and it's interesting to me because I think in the primary care world, those are certainly, I would like my family physician to probably know me as well as anyone on the planet. Yes, yes, yeah. To be effective for me. And instead you get eight minutes. Yeah. I can't talk to people about the weather in less than eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm like, and I'm supposed to figure out whether this is congestive heart failure or anxiety or yeah. you know, what and we really you know things are just slipping through that they're and that and that's that was the other yeah. thing that, right that like you know what I you're there was there was pressure to do more in less time mm -hmm. but also if you didn't get it right, the, the forgiveness there is not what it used to be. No, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and that's, man, that, that just, it, it, it definitely took a toll on me over time. I think it was, because it, it, it weighs, it weighed on me. I, I agree, I, I felt the weight, I did. And, um, you know, as you can be, it, we're all human. You can do the, your best every day. And, you know, some days you're not going to be at your tip top. But it's, you know, things are going to happen. Bad things will happen. And yeah, well, sometimes they get hurt. Right. And that's, I mean, that's kind of the definition of a complication. It's the best guy, the best person on their best day. Yeah. Doing their best job. Still. Something can still go wrong. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I think, if 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 you have relationships with people, with your with your patients, with their families, I think there's a greater sense of, of forgiveness and that they know this guy cares. Right. He truly right. cares. Right, right. You know, and 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 we 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 get it, you know. And and um and and I think that's kind of but if you don't know, or if you're perceived as being the guy who's just already, you know, halfway out the door, people are going to be less forgiving. Sure. And probably appropriately so. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, that's a tough situation. Yeah. Well, I think you're absolutely right when you say you, you have to engage, you have to establish trust, you have to have, let, they have to understand you're, you're on their side. Um, and, and, you know, you are, because, you, you really do want the best. That's, that's the great thing about medicine. I mean, the wonderful thing about it is, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You wake up every day, you know, your job is to make things better for people. Right. Well, your job is still, is still to make things better, right? It's just in a different way. It's a different way. It's in a different way. And, and it, yeah, and it's maybe not so universal. 
I, I think it's, you know, it's more of a select audience, perhaps. Yeah. It was always a select audience. It's just a different audience, right? There's yeah. just a different audience now. Are you are you teaching? Um, no, but I have thought about teaching. Um, I, you know, at this point, it would have to be on Zoom, and I'm not really ready to do that. But I've I've thought about teaching, particularly things like drawing. You know, I can use my, for instance, anatomy. Teaching anatomy for artists would be a good niche. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something I would enjoy. Yeah. Well, and I, th- I think, you know, one of the, you've probably, I, I think you've kind of seen the, the, the topics that I've, I've kind of worked through recently with this. And, and I think a lot of it is, I feel strongly that, that art plays a huge role in society, in, in, in the human condition and in society. Mm-hmm. You know, and that it, it, it helps me. I know it's an easy way for me to lose myself for a while. And that all the external things that impinge on us and the difficulties of the day or whatever, if, if you really, if you're painting, if you're writing, if you're doodling, if you're walking around with your iPhone and taking pictures of cool stuff and trying to get a neat shot that you've had, I mean, even simple stuff like that, all of a sudden you're not thinking about that stuff. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're in this moment and, yeah. and it's just, it's good space. And it's, it's, it's good for, for people's it's there. Clearly there's a lot, there's a lot of evidence, you know, that, that practicing an art in one where Im- improves mental health. Oh, I think so. I think so. And when you think of, I don't know, do you know this guy, um, uh, Chikson, uh, Mihai? He's, yeah. he's the psychologist and he did study on um, flow, flow state. So it's this whole idea that for optimal functioning, you want to be in a position doing something that's um, challenging, but not insurmountable. Um, so that there's an interest level. If, if it's too hard, you know, it's frustrating and you lose interest. If it's too too easy, it's boring, you're dull. So you want that sweet spot. And well, this is this is like the area of flow, optimal functioning. And at that point, you know, you have a sense of clarity and focus. You know what to do the next moment. And then you then you sort of you're just in the moment. You lose a sense of time and you're just just there. And I, I, I find that in painting and uh, I'm sure you, you find that in music too. Um, but yeah, so Chick Sent Mihai, it's a really, it's a po- Polish name, a lot of- <laughs> A lot of consonants. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome back to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, but it's a flow. There's a TED talk, um, short version, but it's, a, it's very interesting. I go, oh yeah, I, I get that. That's where I want to, I want to be right there. So you're just, it's just a little bit, you know, you're just trying the edge all the time. You're just getting right to the, right to the point of, of almost, but not quite frustration. Yeah. No. And I think, I think that's also a skill though, is to kind of, once you get a sense of where you are and. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Kind of throwing your, I, I know in my own, I, I do, I, there's stuff I do that I go, okay, this is easy. This is, mm-hmm. I've got this. And that's kind of nice. And whether you do that just to sort of warm up or just to practice skills or certain things, and then you go on to tackle the more difficult things. And, and that's where the growth occurs. Yes. Yeah. But it's also for me, and I don't know if you're, this, you're the same way, because you know, folks in medicine were very, if you didn't get 100, if you didn't get an A+, plus, yeah. Yeah. you failed. <laughs> right. right so i find like especially doing stuff for me now i'm focused on doing a lot of ear training at the moment oh, like, okay, okay what's that note what's that tone what's the relation you know and because really for me playing music as much and i think it the most important attribute of someone who's successful as a musician is not playing it's listening uh-huh. and 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 it's a frustrating it's a steep hill to climb at least for me like man i'm just and i'm never going to be good enough and so i have to keep putting that little voice like 
this is a process. This is a process. And if you start to get frustrated, just set it aside and come back another day. This isn't, this isn't a three week course. This is right. however right. long you want it to go on. For. How I have to approach the art. Too. But, and I'm sure painting is the same way. It's just, yeah. you know, you kind of go, okay, I know, I know where I want to be. Right. How do I get there? Well, not only that, but as you're going, you go, oh yeah, I see that. I, I'm that half step further, but I, you know, I want to get a little bit further. But so the more you, the more you see, the more you can see. And probably for this, the more you hear, the, the better you are discerning. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it is. It, it, but again, it comes back to, we were talking about this. Is there are very few people who just, you know, fall off the wagon as fully formed artists, right? you know, that emerge from the, the womb as, National Portrait Gallery level people, yeah. you know, I mean, and, and it, it is, it's, I think for most people, it's much more putting the time in, the commitment and the joy of doing it. Right, you know? right. And, and I think, especially in this day and age where everybody's walking around, myself included, staring at their cell phone, you know, or, or I'm on social media or there's the TV, it's like, I don't, they're all passive events. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I do, I learn, is it great to have those research? Like I can look stuff up. I can, but most of it is just, you're being spoon fed mm -hmm. content. Doesn't really require any energy or effort on my part to process it. Right. And I can be manipulated by it. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of the, the societal effects of that right now. So I think that, that practicing an art it, at least is an active way to enhance your life. And active is always better than passive. Yes, yeah, yeah, you really, you're engaged, you're engaged with it. Uh, yeah. I so, well, so, so tell me a little bit, if folks are looking to, to, to see your stuff, how do they get a hold of you or? Well, the best way is my, from my website, um, which is Heidi V, V like victory, HeidiVHuck.com. There's a surprising number of Heidi Hucks out there. So, <laughs> so you need to keep the V in, HeidiVHuck.com. That gets you to my website. And if you like it, I would I would encourage you to sign up for the, I, I put out a newsletter, you know, about once a month, not, not to oversaturate, just to sort of tell people what I'm thinking, where I'm going, what, you know, what my struggles are and what the new art that's coming out. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, well, look, thanks for joining me today. This was really good. I think people have okay. a lot out of it. Thanks so we'll do this again in the future and hopefully we can do this in person at some point in time. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, Thanks for joining us for this segment of Consults Over Coffee. I'm Dr. Michael Jones. My guest today has been Heidi Huck, a recently retired gastroenterologist, nail painting quite successfully, I might add, in northern Michigan, where she's from. I featured some of her work here today. If you'd like to see more of that, you can go to her website, www.heidiv, as in Victor, Huck.com. I think you'll love what you see there. We'll be back next week. Hope to see you then.